Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Music Television. Got a great guest with us today. You know her as one of the voices of Trans-Siberian Orchestra. She's also done a number of projects with the one and only Yanni. She is evidence that there is a God because she has the voice of an angel. She's got a brand new album coming out April 19th. We're going to be talking all about it, the in-between. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Chloe Lowry. Hi! <laughs> Chloe, how are you? I am so good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Thank you so much for joining us today, because obviously you've got a lot going on with your debut album, The In-Between, coming out. I do, I do. It's a really busy time, but I couldn't be happier, super excited. It's just, you know, it's only the beginning in, in a lot of ways. Well, I was just going to say, you know, it's the beginning. Why, you know? Like, you've been in the game for a long time now. What took you so long to get a debut album out? You know, I think it was like, I, I think it's Kismet. I think this was like just meant to be. Like, this was what was supposed to happen. You know, I've been okay. in the industry since I was about 12. Yeah. And, you know, I had a number of record deals that just kind of didn't work out. And, you know, then I just started working with other bands and other projects and whatever. And just it wasn't like the right timing for whatever reason. And, you know, just how everything kind of worked out, it was like the right time for me to actually make the debut myself. So that's what happened. Right on. Now, how long has the in-between been in the works? How long did this take from like start to finish, like from concept to where it is now coming out? April 19th, people, April 19th. April 19th, people, yeah. Um, it's about two years in the making, fully, okay. from start to finish. And, I mean, the record's actually been done, I would say, for maybe a little over six months, like, in its entirety. But, um, you know, you only have one opportunity to release your debut record. So we really wanted to make it right. Um, my team and I, we just took our time making sure that, you know, we had the right videos and we were putting out the right products so that everything made sense. And that stuff just takes a bit to get right. Right. So, you know, and I'm not really, um, I'm not one to be chasing any fads. I'm not trying to compete with, like, the teenagers. You know, it's it's sophisticated pop music. It's quality, in my opinion. And so, like, it's just, there was no rush to get it out. So we just took our time to make sure it was right. Right on, right on. Now, I couldn't help but notice that, you know, you had a number of different collaborations on this album, one of which looks like you brought one of your friends from uh, TSO over with you, Petrelli. I brought Petrelli, Al Petrelli. He's one of my best friends. I've known him since 2010. Okay. Um, I don't really like sharing the stage with anybody else other than him. So <laughs> it was important to get him in on my live shows, but more importantly, even just in the studio. And he guested on a couple of songs. And, you know, I'm so honored to have him apart. Right on, right on. Yeah. Now, you didn't even mess around with this album, you know? Like, you know, a lot of people, when they're coming out for the first time, they at least kind of test the waters with an EP, <laughs> you know? Or they'll come out with, like, you know, 10 nice, solid tracks. You go full bore, you know? You got, like, <laughs> what, 15 tracks on this baby, you know? And, uh, you know, like I told you, I already listened to it a couple of times all the way through. And when I said you have the voice of an angel, Chloe, everybody, I'm telling you right now, if you're not familiar with Chloe Lowry, shame on you. Ah, Definitely. No. Go, go check it out. She's got an official music video that you can go check out now, you know, before the album comes out. Renegade. Go check out that official music video, which I definitely want to talk to you about, Chloe. But um, your voice, I, I have to ask you, is <laughs> it the product of years of hard work and coaching and just a, a lot of, uh, you know, study type of work, you know, being the student or can you chalk up some of this to just good old fashioned DNA? <laughs> you know, I think, I mean, I'm one of those believers with anybody. Like, I think you can teach someone to be a better singer, but I don't think you can actually teach someone to sing. I think right. that's just a God given gift. If you can sing, God just said, hey, you're going to sing. Um, and I think, I, I mean, I, I've always been a singer. I just woke up kind of singing and it was just something I was naturally good at. But I mean, I did put in the work. Um, I'm really diligent about vocal training and vocal health and especially kind of the types of songs that I sing and for my record and even other shows like it, it's very demanding on my voice. So I kind of have yeah. to be a really smart singer and be a healthy singer. So it's a little bit of both, Good I would point. say. But a lot yeah. of it is, you know, maintenance and, and self-care. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things that you said that, you know, I thought was kind of interesting. You got started very young, you know, and yeah. not only did you start singing young, but you got discovered at a young age. I mean, you got picked up, you know, by a major record label at a relatively young age. And it's funny because, you know, right when that was happening for you, because you're a little bit younger than me, um, ah. you know, we had the whole age of American Idol, you know, and the voice and the X Factor and all that stuff going on. Uh, 
you would have won. Uh, like, if, if you went on any of those, you would have won. Was that ever a thought? Did anyone ever approach you saying, you know, Chloe, you, you ought to go on American Idol. You, you'd crush this. Was that ever a thought? You know, it wasn't for me. Okay. Um, no disrespect to anybody who wants to do it. One, I mean, I think when I started working in the in the industry, it was a little bit before American Idol. And then all of a sudden, all those shows started coming out. Right, right. And I was watching the progression of them, and I thought they were great. But I slowly started seeing that I, I kind of just felt like, um, there was only very few people that really got the accolade that they deserved. And okay. it was becoming maybe more of a vehicle for like the judges and people like that. Not so much about the artist. And I just, I didn't want to have that 15 minutes and then hope and then be done. I just, I wanted to try to do something like organically and maybe produce a more longevity career if that was at all possible. So it, that just, it didn't really make sense for me personally. No disrespect to anybody who did do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a very interesting point. But, you know, for the record, I think you would have uh, <laughs> you, you'd have taken it. But you know what? It would actually, I guess it's a blessing because at least you own the rights to everything that you do, you know, for the most yeah. part versus being owned by someone else. Um, you know, going back over the course of your entire career. And again, I mean, the people that you've had a chance to meet and work with so early on, you know, and I'll just touch on Yanni. I mean, talk about an icon, you know, now I'm not going to profess to say I'm the biggest Yanni fan in the world. OK, I'm a little more rock and roll and heavy metal. But all that being said, you know, the man is an icon. Of course. How did that relationship come to be? How did you meet him? And, and was it like working with someone as world renowned as he is? Well, when I was when I when I my first record deal with RCA, um, you know, I wrote with a lot of writers and worked with a ton of producers. And um, I was very close with this one producer named Rick Wake. Um, and we kind of lost touch for a couple of years. Um, and then he connected with Yanni, I think, through a mutual friend. And Yanni was kind of looking to make a comeback. So they connected and Rick had called me. Um, I think I was like 18 or 19. I just gotten off the road with, I think, Big Brother and the holding company. So I was going from rock to something completely different. Right. He was like, hey, Chloe, he's like, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I want you to try and write lyrics to the song, maybe record it at the studio, and then maybe bring you, I want to bring you down to meet Yanni. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll try it. And I honestly wasn't familiar with Yanni's music other than I knew like the Acropolis and that type of thing. Right, right. Um, but I didn't. I was not like an epic Yanni fan. I had no idea what was going on, but um, it really just kind of made sense at the time. And it, I mean, he's everything that he appears to be. He's very worldly, very wise, um, very uh, spiritual, like very, he's just all the things that you think Yanni would be. It's not an act. All right. um, and, he, and he really like took me under his wing. Like he was very kind to me. I don't have, I really don't have one negative thing to say about him. Yeah, no, nah, that's very, very cool. So, you know, so you so you meet and you play with Yanni, and obviously you've got Trans-Siberian Orchestra that you've been doing for, God, quite a while now. And then, not too long ago, Rocktopia. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 so you just rock it all over the place. How cool is that? How much fun have you had with that? It's been great. I mean, it's been great to work with people that I knew. Like, um, one of the co-creators, Rob Evan, he was also in TSO for a very long time, and that's how we connected. Okay. And I, I heard about Rocktopia for a couple years when it was in its development developmental stages and when it actually was getting ready to um, go to Budapest for the PBS special where we shot. Um, he called me. He's like, Chloe, he's like, I think, I think this is right for you. I want you to come in. And it was just great. I mean, I literally, I went and auditioned. I sang a couple songs. And later that day, I knew I got the part. And I had my Broadway debut with this show. So, nice. you know, it's been it's been an experience for sure. Nice, nice. Now, th that being, you know, a, like a Broadway experience, I have to wonder, with a voice like yours, and I'm thinking of some other, you know, very prominent musicians with incredible voices that tested their acting skills out on the silver screen, you know, like a, oh, I don't know, say a Lady Gaga, you know, <laughs> and a, a star is born, you know, and, 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 and she's a New Yorker, if I'm not mistaken, you know, she is. like yourself. Any ambitions to kind of mesh, you know, your acting skill set and your amazing voice and singing to all together into one and, and, and do something like, you know, Hollywood? For sure. I mean, I grew up um, a little bit with, um, I was like half pop rock world and then half theater world. I mean, I've gone to school for it and I've studied acting. Um, oh, I don't know what just happened there. Sorry about that. Um, so, I mean, that's always on the bucket list for sure. It's just kind of figuring out like the right thing at the right time, the right project. Um, but definitely, definitely wanting to do something like that for sure. Right on, right on. So the In Between, everybody, the debut album of Chloe Lowry coming out April 19th. 
So make sure you go check that out. And uh, one of the songs that really got my attention, because again, like I said, I'm a little bit older than you. But, uh, you know, I have a very strict rule when it comes to musicians doing any kind of cover songs, you know. It's like it needs to be as good, if not better, than the original. And obviously where I'm going with this is, you know, you know, know. the song I'm talking about right here, you know. It must have no. been love. Why, 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 why that rock set song? What, what got you there? You know, I, th- it's a little silly and it's not that deep of a story, but I mean, I grew up watching pretty woman with my mom. It's like one of my mom's favorite movies. So I always heard that song and I was always a fan as a kid. Okay. Um, and then I just, I remember my girlfriend and I, um, Ashley, she tours with TSO with me and we just were like music junkies. We listened to music backstage all the time. And we were listening to like a throwback mix. And this is kind of when I was like halfway done with the record and it came on and we were just belting our faces off singing it. I was like, this is a really great song. And I was like, I don't think people really know what the lyrics are. Like it's a really beautiful kind of deep song and i was like it would be great to hear it in a different interpretation and you know what honestly we did try it more up tempo more heavy okay like with a real full production and for whatever reason we were just like you know what it, it's not working it's not right and where it needed to fit in the record it needed to kind of take it needed a breath okay and so this acoustic version was the way we went with it and i just think it's so beautiful and it is. kind of maybe not done enough so i thought i'd give a shot at it, it is, yeah no well you crushed it. You crushed Thanks. it. I really like this. It. <laughs> that your voice is it. You have a very powerful voice. Thank you. You know, I mean, is it is is as soft as it is. Um, God, you know, I mean, there's just I, so many different things, which is why, obviously, with you know, with TSO and with Rocktopia, you really get to showcase so much of the range, you know, that you have, um, not just with your voice, but with the styles, you know, of music that you're uh, performing as well. Now, being that we are Rock Titan Music Television, you know, we are all about the official music video. And yes. uh, obviously you got Renegade out there, you know, in support of your album so far. It made me think, wow, you know, it might be kind of cool to like set up shop in a parking garage. That's a lot <laughs> of space. You know, I'm seeing a bed out there, you know, you got your own little makeshift living room out there, you know, not bad, not bad. Who who chose all that? Was that you? Did you were you the creative mind behind that, or did you have someone else saying this is how we're going to do Renegade? So I worked with Digital Spark Studios. They're based out of Charlotte, and it actually happens to be that one of the co-founders uh, of it is my cousin's husband, which is just a really random thing. But I always knew I wanted to work with him okay. when it was time to make all these videos. And I mean, what we're doing with this whole record is like at the end of um, all the video releases, it will be essentially a movie. We have a video that accompanies every single song on the record. Awesome. Okay, and all I was the interviews as well. So basically, it's like right. if you, if I, I'm, I'm kind of a visual person. I like to kind of put a like a face with a tune or whatever. Wow, well, see, it just kind yeah. of better helps like to pick the record because it's a concept record. So we were like, this is a really great way to like promote it and to get people more into the story. Um, and Renegade, we actually really struggled with that one. It was um, one of the last ones that we shot, and we just couldn't quite get a concept that really justified the meaning of the song that wasn't either cheesy or maybe too straightforward. So we went back and forth with, I think, like maybe seven to ten different ideas, whereas other videos, they've been really easy, and we're like, okay, that's what we're doing. Yes, done. Um, and I have to say, this was the brainchild of Adam, who was the director of the video, and he was like, listen, he's like, let's create the conflict of a relationship, but on a stage, but not an actual stage. The stage is essentially the parking lot, and we'll right. do it all as if it was like one scene, and I was like, I think this is absolute brilliance, and I think you got the raw emotion of the song in the video, so it was perfect. It was. It was cool. Now, I have to apologize, because like, I was looking for all of your official music videos, like anything that you would put out there. Renegade was all I found. Are there other official music videos for the in-between that are already out there? Yes, we have um, How Could You, which came out as more or less the promotion before we even finished the record, which was almost like a year and a half ago. Okay. Shiny, we have uh, Betrayal Interlude, Shiny Toy, Denial Interlude, Renegade. Oh, letting go but the interludes i mean what people don't understand is like there's a song and then there's an interlude for each song that basically just helps um understand the emotion behind the song because it kind of goes to the steer uh, that record goes through the series of you know denial betrayal letting go acceptance forgiveness it's kind of all the stages of grief and in, in in my words if you will okay. so all the videos there's those videos out and um the next one i think comes out next wednesday nice. or so yeah now where can They're everyone like go to check week. these out Chloe Lowry has her own YouTube channel. I'm taking yes. it. Yes. Literally just look at my name, Chloe Lowry, and it should be there. 
Okay. All right. Very cool. Well, again, everybody, we are here with Chloe Lowry. Make sure you go check out her debut album that is coming out April 19th. And uh, Chloe, thank you again so much for being with us. I appreciate it. No, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you guys for supporting me. Love y'all. Yeah, the in-between. <laughs> Rock Cousin TV, we're out. Bye.